Okay, we're shingling a small roof here. What we have is a couple of bundles of number one cedar shingles. They're 18 inches long and they're called Perfections. Uh, and there we have the roof caps down here. So, why these are important to get the better shingles is because they're edge grained. They're cut with the edge grain and they don't, they don't twist up. Uh, as quickly as, as some other shingles that are sideways grained. So spend the extra money and get the proper shingle to begin with. Now I'll show you on this little, it, it's just a little roof over a, um, a stairway into a basement. But it shows all the particulars of a, of a regular shingled roof. So what I did is I put an undercoursing on here that has a granular surface that will let any water build up come out under the shingles. Uh, one thing to know here is you use a shingle hammer and the gauge on that is five and a quarter um, from the top of the shingle to the bottom of the next one. So you put your nails just above that five and five and a quarter inches. So what they call this is exposure to the weather. Five and a quarter inches exposure to the weather. Which means you've got a good overlap on the inside of that. Now here you can see the metal. Uh, it's, this corner is going to get covered with flashing but this is called step flashing. And each one, you put one in under each shingle and it allows the water to drain away from the side of the house. I'm going to on this particular one, I'm going to put a flat piece of metal that goes, that overlaps this and goes up under the sill or under this fancy thing here to provide a totally weatherproof seal here. Um, if on the other side though, I don't have this window sill board, so I will do a little counter flashing like this with just a cut off on it and I'll cut that into the wood siding slightly so that it also expels the water and gives a nice paint edge. Step flashing, that's what that's called. You can buy that at your local building store. Now here's another flashing and it's for the edge of the gable end. Uh, it protects the, the seam in the, in the sheathing from getting water in and also finishes everything off nicely. You can see it here. Um, it, I, I just raised it up and I cut it once and let it bend over the other side. This side is still loose but you can see the, the profile there. Yeah, and that's all it is. We use about inch and inch and a half coated nails uh, if you're near the ocean. You need to use stainless nails to be cold, but these are just inch and a half. Well, these are actually two inch, but it's it's fine as long as it goes through everything and doesn't split the wood. Um, if this was a large job, I'd have a, a power nailer hooked up to an air compressor, but this is such a small job that I'm going to just hand nail it. And that's it. So you need a shingle hammer if you want, otherwise you can tape a piece of wood to the handle of your regular hammer and just use it like that. If you tape a piece of wood back here, that will give you a temporary gauge. And uh, make sure you get your flashings in right so that nothing leaks up against the house. And it's a great, great deal. Uh, you can do little jobs like this by yourself if you want. or or you can hire somebody, but at least you know how it should be done.